Dave Tatton, store promoter. Here we are just before the uh, home meeting against Sheffield. I'd like to just talk briefly, if we can, really, about um, the role that you've had to play as promoter with these injuries. Looking for guests week in, week out. Not an easy job, Dave? Um, no, not really. You know, it can take quite a bit of your time off looking for the guests, choosing the right guests. Uh, around Luma Road, we've not done so bad. Uh, and I don't think we've really done that bad away. You know, out of the amount of guests we've used, you're obviously going to get a guest who, who doesn't do it that night, doesn't do it on that track. Uh, and we've only had a couple of those. The guests have been absolutely brilliant. They've given 110%. Um, I, you know, I can't even and wouldn't handpick one out and say, hey, he didn't do the job or he did a better job. They've all given 110% and they've been an absolute pleasure to work with. It's, it's, been, it's been good to talk to them, get another rider's point of view uh, from another club. Um, no problem at all, they've been good. Now, I'm probably as bad as anybody in the sense that I'm always badgering you who we're going to run the next meeting this, but for a reason, of course. But it's not that easy or straightforward for you, is it, to sort of pick the right man for the right job well you know you, you, you go up the route uh, of, of tonight for instance um, you know we can't use anybody from Hull because they were here uh, or they're going to be here next week um, and you have to then take an account of the teams that are riding tonight and you say well surely the guest out of 18 teams um, you know take Stoke take Hull um, you know take Sheffield that's three out of the 18 no you know uh, Rye House will be riding you know, whoever they have, they've got at home tonight so, you know, it all, all of a sudden dwindles down to seven or eight, and seven or eight guests that you could possibly or n may not be able to use. You know, you then come into the, the scenario of these new sh pink sheets where you have to take into consideration the rider who has done his first 12 meetings has possibly got a very, very good average. We're still using Robbie's uh, original average from the beginning of the season. So it does become quite difficult and, and very, very time-consuming. In a way, uh, uh you know, we'd rather have Robbie here riding for us, but has it been, has there been anything positive in the fact that he still does retain his original average, which was quite high? Absolutely great. You know, it, it's been um, an easier average to cover. Um, 867, it's down to 861. You know, people will look at it and say, well, where's he got his 861? That average has taken over the two or three league matches that he actually did for us. So you're looking for an 861 rider. You know, you... We, we lost quite a few in, in July, Gary Stead, and you know our, the, there's one or two, Andrew Appleton's gone out of the equation now. But as, as one or two fall out, one or two come into the equation. Um, but it's very, very difficult, and you're always on tender hooks. Have you picked the right guest? Is, there, is the guest going to perform for you? But as I, you know, I said earlier, they've all given us 110%, no qualms with any of them. <coughs> as you said yourself, Dave, previously, covering for a number one is maybe not too difficult in, a, in one sense. It's not quite so easy sort of replacing uh, Daniel Gifford down at reserve, is it? Well, no, you know, Luke Priest done us a pretty good job. You know, he, the, the, the guy is on, his, he's on his way into the career, isn't he? Serving his apprenticeship of sorts at the sport. And, um, you know, it's very difficult to get a three-pointer. You're looking for a three-pointer who can get you five points. Uh, and, you know, take next Saturday. Um, I believe there's 10 conference league matches. So that takes 10 three-point riders out of your mm. equation. And I'm sure out of one of those 10, possibly Luke will be riding uh, in, in a conference league for Sheffield. I'm not sure, but I would guess he would be. So, you know, it becomes another headache. Um, mm. And there is nothing like having your own settled seven men. Okay. And it's proving very difficult. Uh, last Sunday, I spent sort of three, four hours phoning America, phoning Germany, speaking to various riders. Don't let anybody run away with the idea that I sit back and, and we do nothing about it. There's phone calls daily that you, you, you're juggling with averages. You know, you see our office in there, there's bits of paper everywhere. Seven points, does this go into that? I was talking to our sponsor, Cyril Chow, from Easy Rider last week. And he says, well, what have we got left? And, you know, we were grading the track here. I stopped and I said, this is what we've got left. And all of a sudden, you've got 5.3 to... to if, if you were trying to get equations in, at that particular time, I'd got 5.3. There are no 5.3 riders about. You know, the, net, the guy you're looking at is Martin Dixon. He would gladly do it, but he ain't road. It's getting towards halfway to the season. You know, and he says, I'll need the rest of the season to catch up the guys mm. who've done the first <coughs> half of the season. He said, it'd be totally unfair on me and totally unfair on your club having me. 
So, you know, it, it's mm. not an easy task, believe me. And it isn't a task I sit back and say, well, it'll happen when it happens. You're working on it. I've worked on it today. I've uh, been speaking to another promoter today. Two, three times, been chasing him. Maybe made a nuisance of him myself to him. But that's what you have to do if you want to <coughs> try and get your own saddle one to seven. Can you tell us what is the situation with the number six berth at the moment then? Can the league continue? Or, or do you bring Conference League riders in on a you know, weekly basis? I think what we would possibly do, we were trying to give Luca an extended run in the team, which I think that will possibly end tonight <coughs> with the amount of meetings he's done for us. Then we should possibly have to bring another three pointer in, obviously from the league below, because you know you can use a guest for Dan, um, and you know, but you can only use a guest for him who has got his average, who is a conference league rider. I mean, Dan really, uh, as we all know, was all shaping up to be above a conference league rider. Dave, now. You know, in an ideal world and the makeup of the team, it's absolutely brilliant to have Alan Moggridge back in the side. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, we all saw Alan on Wednesday. You know, no pressure on Alan on Wednesday. Get round, feel the bike. I'm sure he got a few aches and pains Thursday morning having not been on the bike for <coughs> all six weeks. Um, you know, but I'm sure a fit Alan Moggridge and a racer Alan Moggridge will make one a hell of a difference to tonight's meeting here at Stoke. Okay. Finally, Dave, now then, um, we know how busy you have been trying to sort of cover for the terrible, terrible run of injuries that you've had this year. Have you, uh, Robbie Chester was in hospital yesterday, have you any knowledge of how he got on? No, I haven't. Um, you know, the, we, just, we scotched the rumours in the press and hopefully um, those rumours have now died that we've sacked Robbie Castle. No truth in the matter. Robbie was hoping to return last weekend. Uh, he had the, the, the sad news that he'd got to have a bone graft. Uh, which took us all by uh, somewhat surprise. We thought the, the job was healing quite nicely from his hip switch um, journey up to Brian Simpson's there to have the laser treatment. But what has actually happened is we've put in the press, the, the, he had the bone, uh, a plate put in the bone, and what has happened, one of the screws have gone through a crack in the bone, so we're not letting the calcium join the, the two bones. So the only way to do that now is a skin graft from his hip. No truth in the matter that we had sacked him. We wouldn't do that to <coughs> Robbie Castle at this moment. And, and I don't think there's any reason that we should sack Robbie Castle. He's done nothing wrong to, to myself, to Caroline, or to Stoke Speedway. Okay. Dave Tatton, thank you very much and all the very best for the rest of the season. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. back with us. Sit back. 
I'm sure people down the back straight are going to show that applause as well for that opening heat. As Sean and Craig exchange handshake. We continue coming from South Yorkshire, right? Of course. And that's the easy ride of our cycle. Our main team sponsor. Sponsoring the opening heat. Heat one. So the Brewers come back to the pits quickly. Want to get the thing rolling along? And we'll roll on and get the official word on the first heat from Derek. Cheers, George. The official results of heat number one. First in green for the Tigers, Sean Wilson. George winning time, 65.4, 65.4. Second in red for the Potters, Frank Smart. And third in blue with partner, John Armstrong. Three points apiece, 65.4 with Sean's winning time. Straight on heat number two, but red for the Potters, Luke Priest. In blue with partner, Joe Cook. In green for the Tigers, Adam Allen. And then yellow and black in partner, Ben Wilson. Gate wise running across one to four. Off one in green, Adam Allen. Off two in red, Blue Priest. Off three in yellow and black, Ben Wilson. And off four in the blue helmet, Joe Cook. Eight two. It's the Potters versus the Tigers. Very late action here tonight. Adam Allen. Marshall on the fourth turn. We need a flag for Marshall on the fourth turn. We need a flag Marshall on the fifth turn. 